called for me, but again, I'd like to thank KTEC for this opportunity. I'd like to thank my superintendent, my district coordinators, and my principal for my for the support during this project. I did choose Hyperlab, or it's also known as Walk the Line. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. It is an LTF, which is now a NIMSI lab. Uh, so if you've had the training, and if you've not, the good news is I've been uploading it on my hog. So all the documents that you see here, don't, I didn't want to bring a paper trail, and you wouldn't have to worry about keeping up with it. You will be, be able to access it on the holler. My lab, okay, my students had the objective was to recreate these eight graphs of distance versus time. And we know that our kids are scared to death with math and science anyway. So uh, this activity afforded... It really is under the umbrella of STEM. It affords itself really well because it is science, it's technology, it's engineering, and it's math. So it was a perfect opportunity for the students not only to integrate all that, but to get to use the technology. And what I chose, and I brought just the display, was the lab, Vernier LabQuest 2. This is a very multifunctional device. It's like a little computer. And the kids, as you see here, got their motion detectors. And there is a creativity aspect in it, and then I'll let them choose how they, they had to really just play around with this to, to figure out how it worked. And we'll go on. And there, there was 105 students involved in this activity. So it was expensive. Some questions or concerns, I didn't want you to think from the last meeting that I didn't read the questions or concerns, because I did. And I, this may not mean a lot to you if you didn't sit in on the first session. But one of the concerns was, or question, is the prior training required for the Vernier Lab Quest? Guys, our kids would hate to say, I'm not, I'm a dinosaur. But they are not. They are great at technology. I end up asking them questions at the end of just the classroom period. Now, how did you do that? How did that work? So it does not require any training, but it also, there's always directions on how to use the Lab Quest with any of the labs. Um, the NIMSI labs or the LTF labs are hitting the web constantly, but I do encourage you just to network via the hall and through your cohorts, and you'll find many of these labs. Um, one of the rubrics that some, I always use when I do teamwork, I always use the four C's, and that's the 21st century skills, and I develop the rubric for that every activity that we do. My kids, I post it, but they don't ask me. They know that that four C rubric, they're going to be assessed using that. But just so you know, and not to bore you with the slideshow of all that, I have uh, posted that on the holler also, so you can access it there. One of the other questions, and I think it was from Mr. Hawkins, he said, how can you bring in your community and involve your community? Well, if you noticed on our video, one of the videos showcased here today, if you noticed, we had a career day. So we had engineers, several engineers from the local engineering firm, come and just confirm to the kids, you need these skills. You need those 21st century skills. You need the technology skills. Even though the technology will be changing, you need them. Why did I choose this lab? This lab engages students. You really are the role of the facilitator. It is small group, it's inquiry based, it's aligned to core content. I apologize for the top of inadvertent, but it brings in language arts, and that's what you see some of the students here. They have to describe how they recreated those graphs, those eight graphs of distance versus time. So it ties in the language arts, it ties in the math, and it just so happened that two weeks after I did this, uh, the kids came back and said, This is what today in math we did in science two weeks ago. So I was very pleased that they could see the correlation. I didn't have to tell them. They actually got to experience it. So it's a great project. How did I assess this? Because it is very difficult. Again, I used the four C's, and I have transposed that into a novice apprentice proficient for distinguished school so that they do know. And I'll be honest, I accept nothing but proficient. If you're below, you're going to redo it. Um, so group work, written work, graphing skills, and now the big push with STEM and all the engineering is to make a claim, have evidence for that claim, and have reason. And this is showcased also in this project. And I did pull what the kids are doing here. 
which was wonderful. I just haphazardly found it one day looking on the internet. And it's an activity that's actually from a college. And the kids have to put the scenario with the graph, and then the dad will take walks on it. So they get to see a lot of the math skills, science skills, and that was just a wonderful follow-up assessment. And you can do formative, you can count it, you know, do individual daily and have them match one. You can do this as a summative assessment, whatever you chose to do. But again, they work on it until they get a model correct. Okay? Who benefits from the hiker lab? I told you I have earlier 105 students did this, but I had five FMD kids that came in that you would have not been able to pick out from my group of kids. So it really lends itself to a wide population of students, which is one of the reasons that I chose it. And they did really <laughs> cool with the technology. Um, so it does, it's from gifted to the special ed population, but all kids are held accountable to the efficiency of the and the teacher has to go by an initiative, so I don't let them go on until I come by so I stand on it. Once they do, they, they're free to go forward. You have to be involved. And this is just one of mine. I stole this from somewhere years ago, but a teacher on the feet's work two in the seat. And I truly believe that. You've got to be engaged as well as the kids. Other reasons for choosing this activity in the lab quest, sustainability factor. You know, these are going to become dinosaurs and extinct, but they are great data collection devices. They can be used on many other labs if you're willing to purchase them. Lab, uh, temperature probes, pH probes, oxygen sensors, carbon dioxide sensors, you can use these. They're wonderful. So they're always going to do that, whether you're talking about global warming and you want to do the carbon dioxide, whatever you want to do, it's available. So, that's the reason, and they are cheap. I know a lot of people are choosing the Texas Instruments. These are cheap, and they do as much. So all documents, again, seen here can be found on the hall, and if you have any questions or comments, and I appreciate your time.